We had three days in Nashville to shop, sightsee, try their famous hot chicken, walk around Broadway, attend the Grand Ole Opry, and a special trip to the Jack Daniels Distillery. One of the odd things we did was a mural tour. I like seeing different murals in different cities, and Nashville had some of my favorites. We also did a little bit of shopping while Matt happily stayed back at camp to work. One of the stores we went to was Antique Archaeology. It's the American Pickers store from the TV show. And I was a little disappointed because I was expecting more of an antique store, and this was more of a gift shop. I was tempted by the Jack Daniels store next door, but we're gonna go see the real thing later. We also ate at some of Nashville's most popular spots. I was really impressed with Five Daughters Bakery, Every donut flavor we tried was delicious, and the place is really cute too. The very popular pancake pantry, on the other hand, was just okay. Probably one of the most famous places in Nashville is Hattie B's, and it lived up to the hype. Their hot chicken was delicious, and we love really spicy food, but Matt ordered their hottest flavor, the Shut the Cluck Up, and he was in tears. I don't know why we didn't get that on video. It is pretty legendary. Legendary shakes are outrageous and super delicious too. I had to take mine on the go because we still have so much of Nashville to see. Unfortunately, we didn't have time for the Johnny Cash Museum, but we did have time for the Country Music Hall of Fame. We've been to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Ohio and we weren't really impressed with it. I think this was done so much better and this comes from someone that's more rock and roll than country. This car was something else. Guns, saddles, silver dollars, horns. I feel like Boss Hogg would have loved to chase the Dukes in this car. I'm not sure the significance of this car, except that it was Elvis's. Now, Smokey and the Bandit's Trans Am, that's a little closer to my generation. Now it's time to explore Broadway and all the fun honky tonks. We didn't find any trouble here. It actually felt pretty safe. Our first honky tonk was Tootsie's, and you might have heard of Loretta Lynn, Jason Aldean, Patsy Cline, Taylor Swift, or maybe Willie Nelson. Well, they all played here along with so many others. So each honky tonk has at least one live band and some even have multiple. And the music pours out, filling the streets with so much energy.
What really surprised me was how many talented people there are. Every band we heard was good enough to be playing on the radio. I get so excited to see Dole Whips outside of Disneyland, and this one had rum in it. So many great places to choose from here so our plan was to find the rooftop patios so we could get the views of Broadway and then hear all the other bands playing up and down the street We are moving on up in country music to the Grand Ole Opry. The Grand Ole Opry is one of the longest running radio broadcasts in the United States. So when you're watching live, you're not just watching a concert, you're also getting a sneak peek of a radio show. There's no video allowed inside, and with music copyright laws, I ended up using random music with similar feels to each performance. So this music is not from the show. We got so lucky and ended up with amazing seats. The Opry House just opened to full capacity and no masks the night we were there. So somehow we ended up in the very front row. So the show starts with the radio announcer introducing the show, and then he introduces the first act, and they perform three songs, and then the announcer introduces the next act, and it continues that way for two hours. So we get performance after performance in all different styles and eras. The first act was Whispering Bill Anderson, and he is a member of the Country Music Hall of Fame and the Songwriters Hall of Fame. I wish I could forget you and all the things Adam Dolak is a newer singer, and we hear him on Sirius XM The Highway all the time. The Jeannie Seely is a singer, and she's been a member of the Grand Ole Opry for over 50 years. And we'll go ooh, ooh, this town. Aaron Lewis caught us by surprise. His voice was amazing, but boy, he sounded a lot like a rock band that we've heard. And that's because he's from the band Stained. He was our favorite performance of the night, playing two new songs not yet released and one very popular song, Country Boy, which the crowd went crazy for. Maggie Rose is also a singer and she has more of a pop rock feel to her. Writers in the Sky were really cute. They've been Opry members since 1982, and you actually might know them from somewhere. They sang Woody's Roundup in Toy Story 2. Some people like fried chicken, others like the ham, but palm bread and buttermilk made me what I am. Gary Mule Deer is a comedian and musician, and he's appeared in over 350 television shows.
The last performer of the night was an amazing harmonica player, Charlie McCoy. He's in the Country Music Hall of Fame, and he's the most recorded harmonica player in history. He's been on songs by Elvis Presley, Bob Dylan, Johnny Cash, Loretta Lynn, Waylon Jennings, Steve Miller Band, Perry Como, Paul Simon, Chris Christopherson. And just like that, it's over. Those two hours flew by. I could have easily sat for another two hours. It was so fast paced and entertaining. And I'm not even a country person, although I think I am now. And this was definitely one of our highlights of this trip. It's an hour and a half drive from Nashville to the Jack Daniels Distillery, but oh my gosh, it was definitely worth the drive. We had tickets for the Flight of Jack tour, which is an hour and a half tour of the distillery and a tasting at the end. Well, somehow my daughter forgot her purse with her ID in it back at camp in the trailer. So Matt and I did the regular tour and she did the Dry County tour. And that just doesn't have the tasting at the end. Inside the Jack Daniels Visitor Center is a beautiful but small museum with a little bit of everything in it. This nearest screen display is fairly new, along with his prominence to Jack Daniels. Nathan Uncle Nearest Green was an enslaved man that taught an eight-year-old Jack Daniels how to make whiskey, and he was eventually hired to be Jack's master distiller. The story is really interesting and worth looking up on the internet to get all the details. For the tour, we're assigned an amazing guide, and we board a bus that drives you up a hill, and then you make your way down by foot, touring the distillery. All right, we're gonna head up here to the top of the hill. You're gonna see some barrel houses up here. Jack Daniels is actually in a dry county, so they have specific rules they have to follow when it comes to their alcohol. That's more than three million barrels of whiskey sitting in a dry county. I'm gonna guess we're the wettest dry county in the world. I don't know that. There are a few exceptions to the rules. Like all the employees get a free bottle of Jack Daniels on the first Friday of every month. And that's a tradition that Jack started himself. We're gonna go into a barrel house at the end of the tour. And we're gonna go into the oldest and smallest barrel house that we have. Now it was built just right when we opened back up. You've got barrel houses, you've got green, you've got smells, you've got the entire Jack Daniel distillery right there. So we'll talk when we get to the bottom. Think it gets any more southern than that. <laughs> we were really lucky and happened to visit on a charcoal making day. Jack Daniels makes their own charcoal to filter their whiskey. And to do that, they burn pallets of sugar maple and they even start it with their own moonshine. So we don't make charcoal every single day, all day long. We only make it as needed. There are only two men who work in this charcoal making department. So the next time you have a shot of Jack Daniels, make sure you thank either Tracy or Darren for their excellent filtration.
So this isn't the current firehouse, but they do have a firehouse number seven that was created in 1930 after a fire burned the distillery. And they staff it with 34 distillery workers who are trained volunteer firefighters. This was Jack Daniels' office and the location of the infamous safe. So the story goes that Jack got to work really early one morning and couldn't get the safe open, and he got so mad that he ended up kicking it. Well, he broke his toe and it got infected. So six years later in 1911, he ended up dying of sepsis. Inside the secret room were big vats of, I think it was mash, and our guide lifted the lid off of one so we could smell it, and I guess it smelled like whiskey. Here is another exception to the Dry County rule, our tasting. I know I'm always saying this right before I take a shot, but I really hate the taste of alcohol. Right, for pot, um, some people get floral or perky. I smell juice on yeah. chewing gum when I smell it. That's With how widely distributed Jack Daniels is, I was shocked at how close-knit of an operation it is. Generation after generation work here, even some of Nearest Green's family still works here, and everyone we met on the tour had at least one family member that worked in another department. It really made me appreciate this brand so much. After our tour, we met back up with our daughter and walked over to town to have some lunch at Miss Mary Bobo's. This is Mulberry. Miss Mary Bobo's opened in 1908, where Miss Mary ran it as a boarding house while her husband worked at the distillery. It was a very interesting restaurant, and you could definitely feel the history. We were seated by the sweetest little lady, and I believe pre-pandemic, they used to sit at your table and share their stories. Another interesting thing about this restaurant is that the servers are Jack Daniels scholarship students who attend the local community college. Their menu is kind of like a fixed menu where they don't have a lot of options. I would say that the food was like a Southern grandma's food where you get a really good, no frills filling meal.
The little town square area of Lynchburg was really cute and touristy. We did do some shopping and I actually did buy a half barrel planter. We'll just have to figure out how we carry it home later. We had one last weird stop before dropping our daughter off at the airport and continuing on to our next city. There is a full-size replica of the Parthenon in Nashville for some reason. We didn't go inside because I felt like we were wasting enough time just looking at the outside. Obviously, our daughter wasn't impressed either. What does the dragon from the movie Coco have to do with the Parthenon? That's the next question. We are on the hunt for lightning bugs because my gland has never seen them before. You saw one? <laughs> They're attracted to weed? No, maybe we're high. <laughs> oh, I saw it in the street. Oh, it was right over our heads. You went right next to me. Oh yeah, you can see it. Just barely there. 